familiar. You're familiar. So if you don't know by now, then you should probably get familiar. familiar. Alright, everybody, this is the Raw after SummerSlam official review. I'll try not to make it too long this time, but I might. I just might, because there are some things we got to talk about. There's some things we got to talk about. First of all, the show starts off with Drew McIntyre cutting a promo. He's good on the mic. He is. But I need him to stay in the Braveheart Highlander character that is Drew McIntyre. That's the badass. That's the Scottish psychopath. And I know it's not his fault. They're giving him cards and scripts to read. I gotcha. But damn. If this was Roman Reigns from a couple years ago, or even now, I guess, we would crucify him for... He he was hyping up the, the damn Thunderdome, telling the fans to give him thumbs up. Why do they do this to all their faces? The reason Drew McIntyre is getting over is because he's a badass. He's the Highlander. Braveheart. Not... Not... Not calling, not, not giving thumbs up. I don't want that. Don't make jokes. He made a couple of jokes too. Don't. Just don't. Please. Just just don't. That's how you become lame. Very quickly. Just, just, just don't. Again, it's not his fault. It's Vince McMahon and the creative team and the writer's fault. So I'm not blaming him at all. He actually pulls it off the best anyone could with that, that material. He definitely pulls off better than Roman used to. When they used to give Roman that shit? Ugh. Ugh. Terrible. Terrible. But, as he leaves, he uh, walks up the ramp and he holds up his title one more time. He even says, one more time, and does a roar. Again, he came off looking like a, kind of like an overconfident champion. He did. He looked overconfident. He was like, yeah, you probably should get your ass kicked right now. And that's not how I should feel with Drew McIntyre. You shouldn't feel that way. He's not supposed to be a cocky douchebag. He came off like that a little bit. A little bit. He got attacked, of course, by Randy Orton from behind. And uh, Orton beat him up a good bit until they went backstage where he punted him. And after he punts him, he walks off. Drew McIntyre then, kind of Shawn Michaels style, sits up and is, for the most part, okay appearing to be getting up. Randy comes back and punts him again. And then the second one, he didn't try to get up at least. But a punt is easy to sell. It's so easy to sell. Just do it like Adam Cole does. And most people did until fucking Ric Flair, or until uh, this feud with Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels. People just go out. You go out, just close your eyes and act dead for about 30 seconds so the camera gets off you. That's it. But now his eyes were open. He just looked like he was breathing hard. But he got kicked in the head, man. Not in the chest. Sell it like he got kicked in the head. Just close your eyes. It's very simple. Just, just lay there. Be asleep. Be asleep. <laughs> That's it. So, eh, whatever. I did like that that does sell. Like, oh, well, maybe Drew McIntyre won't make it to payback. So what are we going to do? I did like that. Good idea. Dual punts. We rarely see dual punts. I'm not sure if we ever have seen someone get punted back to back. No, I'm not sure. Maybe, but I'm not sure. And of course, they have Basler and Bailey have a match. Basler beats her by DQ. Who who cares? Because Nia Jax got involved. And afterwards, Nia Jax com confronts Shayna Basler and talks to her about Nia wants the tag titles and is kind of asking for her to be her partner. Why do they do this, man? What the fuck? It's another wonky, wacky tag team that hate each other, jammed together. Woo! Why? Shayna Baszler's really good, and Nia Jax has potential. Why? If this is your the way to go, started they should have started telling this story six weeks ago? Six weeks ago? Payback is right now, and all we got is them saying, yep. I'll do it, and Shayna's going to do it to get her Nia off her back. Shayna, you do realize if you win those titles, you 
you still are her partner. It's not like that's it and you just go home and Nia takes both titles home. So now you're agreeing to deal with Nia for the foreseeable future. Hopefully this is just a couple week thing, maybe a month. Because I, I think they're going to win the titles from Sasha and Bailey. Maybe not though with these two, maybe not because maybe Nia and Shayna will end up fighting during a match. I'm actually hoping for that more. I don't want to see these two having the titles, not Shayna Baszler especially. She's She should be doing so much more than tag team with Nia Jax. No thank you. And then we had the Kevin Owens show. And his uh, guest was Aleister Black with an eye patch. Good job selling, sticking to it. Selling the uh, the eye gouge that uh, I think it was Buddy Murphy did to him a while ago. And Kevin Owens does just normal, proper interview. He's a face, clearly a face. And uh, Aleister Black takes a knee and holds his eye as if, I guess, sudden pain came to it. Kevin Owens asks, you know, to get some help. Let's get some help for the guy. Out of nowhere, Aleister Black finally fucking turns heel. Black master Kevin Owens. And I love Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is the is the man. Probably the best wrestler in the company right now. In, in, in all areas. Like, at, overall. But yes, please. Aleister Black as a heel. Even with an eye patch. It just looks... He looks kind of cool with it. That works. First, Kevin Owens as a face. Stun Owens stun. Kick. Black kick. I'm good to go. I'm good to go. Take my money. The only problem with this, the only problem, and it's a it's a minor one, is Alistair has to win the match at Payback. He does. He does. He has to win that match. But I'm okay with that because Kevin Owens is kind of, I won't say he's like firmly cemented his name. He's not quite, but he is a former former world champion, universal champion. So, I think he's okay, and the company really likes him. He's one of Triple H's boys. He'll be fine. Alistair needs this in a big win in what will probably be the best match of the night against Kevin Owens. Yeah, let's do that. Please, let's do that. And I actually hope it becomes a feud. Not just uh, this match, this on Raw, and then the match at Payback, and that's it. I would like that to be like a go past Payback to whatever the fuck the pay-per-views after that. Let's get two matches out of this. And please, no roll-ups. No roll-ups. For Christ's sake, no (sighs) roll-ups. Then we had a fatal four-way for the 24-7 championship. Why are we still doing this title? For what? For what? This might be the worst title in the history of the company. It might be. It's damn sure the ugliest. But it, it might be the worst, most meaningless title in the history of this company. And they just keep giving it. I, they, it deserves no time. You just get rid of it. Or put it on Raw Underground and change it to the Raw Underground title. But the 24-7 title as we know it should not exist. We had our fun. It's no longer fun. It's now annoying as shit. Nah. Sean Benjamin walked into the 24-7 champion. He lost. Tuzawar got it back. For what? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who? Who? No, just stop. And then, Randy Orton's cutting a promo. Kind of uh, explaining why he beat up Drew McIntyre. I liked it. It was nice. It's Again, Randy Orton's been cooking for months now. Everything he does is golden at the moment. And then Keith Lee. The Limitless. Keith Lee makes his Raw debut. Great. (laughs) And against Randy Orton, even better. Even better. And he challenged him to a match tonight in the main event. Orton, with a perfect answer, says maybe later and rolls out. Fantastic promo. We know the match is going to happen later. And it did. It was made official during the commercial break, which I always hate. Just like made official by who? I thought we had no authority figures. 
Just bring, just bring back commissioners, for Christ's sake. They don't have to be McMahons. Just any commissioners. We don't have to even see them on TV often. Do it like William Regal does on NXT. We see him once every six weeks. That's it. But when a match is booked, they get the commentators are allowed to say it was booked by William Regal. Makes it feel real. Instead, this was just go out of you watch a Burger King commercial and we come back and it's just Keith Lee versus Orton later tonight. What? Says who? Then we had Montez Ford versus Angel Garza, which on paper, with if given time, these two could have had a good match. It didn't get time, and it was a complete afterthought to uh Ivar of the Viking Raiders coming out and continuing his all women think I'm cute gimmick which is funny but it, it might be getting close to running its course like be careful here it's kind of yeah we're getting iffy here and Otis is kind of already doing the same similar type of thing with Mandy Rose uh, we're getting iffy and that completely just took over the match no one cared about the match it was literally about Garza and he has that uh, real world or whatever she is, a bachelorette, bachelor chick, the blonde chick that's been like flirting with him for weeks, which doesn't make sense. Garza, you got Charlie Caruso standing right next to you all the time. They had a thing going. They had banter. They used to flirt. That was actually, a, that seemed like a good, like little storyline to do. No, they just added this blonde bachelor. Like that's going to raise ratings if they have a bachelor bachelorette star on it. No one cares, Vince. Nobody cares. Most people have no idea who she is. And uh, she leaves with uh, Ivar. And that distracts Angel enough for Montez Ford to hit his, I think they call it From the Heavens, Frog Splash, which is a thing of absolute beauty. It really is From the Heavens. Good Lord. It's amazing. And he jumps. And I guess he's switched it now. It's not just a normal Frog Splash. Because it's the second night in a row he's done it. He, it's a frog splash, but he spins, kind of like uh, kind of like Alexa Bliss's Twisted Bliss, but this is like a hundred times prettier. You know what I mean? He just he jumps and he does one eighty. It's 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 beautiful. It really is. Huh. Then we had fuck, fuck. Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, and Bianca Belair. Why are they together? I hate when they jam women together for team team ups. They don't make they make no sense. They, they don't go together. Versus Zelina Vega and the Iconics. I guess this is supposed to be Bianca Belair's revenge for Zelina Vega nearly killing her husband. You see how that hasn't made sense yet? Attempted murder. Now, did Zelina actually do it? We don't know. We don't know. But Bianca Belair and the Street Profits are supposed to think that she actually did. And she's... Bianca beats her in a na standard, very short... Six woman tag. She gets the pinfall, and afterwards she's just smiling, huge smile, and hugging uh, the riot squad. Your husband nearly died a couple weeks ago. Was nearly dead. Poisoned. Standard, standard six man tag. No thanks. Come on, just make it make sense. That's all. That's all. Then we had an arm wrestling match between Apollo Crews and Bobby Lashley. When will they learn that these never work? Nobody cares. It doesn't help the feud, usually hurts the feud, and it doesn't matter who's involved or how it ends. First of all, baby faces always win. They do. They always win these. And it always comes off stupid. It always does. This was no different. Just like the little Big Papa Pump versus Triple H in the arm arm wrestling match. They did it too. Of course, Steiner won. He was the face. Who cares? It happens the exact same way every time and nobody cares. That feud was dead on arrival 15 years ago with an arm wrestling contest. And they did a push-up contest. Then a modeling contest. What was supposed to be a huge feud between... Scott Steiner of WCW versus Triple H of WWE. In Steiner's first feud, they turned into a complete charade. This isn't luckily going down that path yet, because I think it ends this Sunday, so they don't have time to make it get worse. 
Put arm wrestling contest. <sighs> Change the fucking channel. Lakers were playing. Luckily, they're luck Vince is lucky he was a fucking blowout, so he still had some ratings. Cruz, of course, beats Lashley. Babyfaces always win these by stomping on his foot, made Lashley look like an idiot, and then beats him up afterwards. Lashley, please win and take that belt off, off of him immediately. And it's not Apollo Cruz's fault. It's just how they book their babyfaces. They keep doing this. Things did not get any better. The next segment was Natalia and Lana just making fun of Mickey James. And why is Natalia? This is what Lana has to do since Rusev got released. She's been demoted to Natalia's little little buddy. Please, please, God, no. There's nobody. There's no. There's no male wrestler she can manage. There's nobody. No one. I don't even care who. Put her with uh, Cesaro. I don't care. I don't even give a shit if you get the draft is coming up. Switch b the brand switching. People are going to be flying everywhere. This is your chance to pick a man out that needs some help on the mic. Give him Lana. And give him Lana. I do not care who. Just please do it. I don't care if it's a heel or a face. Give them Lana. You are wasting her. And you're causing me to have to look more at Natalia and listen to Nat Natalia's terrible promos. Please no. Even though I will say uh, Lana looked fantastic in that in her white dress, she always looked great though. Mickey James came out, blah blah blah. Who cares? Who cares? We're getting the two old ladies of wrestling in a match. I don't. I, I just don't care. No offense to them. You're both Hall of Famers. I don't care anymore. You both should probably just be helping out in the back, training the next generation. And then we had Keith Lee versus Randy Orton. The match was okay. It was okay. It really never got in past first gear, which is fine. You'll save it for when it actually matters, I guess. But this is Keith Lee's debut. It didn't really feel special. Orton, you could tell, didn't want to take any of the big bumps that, that Keith Lee usually delivers. His little pounce, the little shoulder tackle that usually sends people flying, he clearly did it at about 25%, and Orton just fell and rolled instead of flying away. Like what usually happens with Keith Lee rams into you. And uh, eventually it, it, it did look like Orton was going to pick up the victory. And uh, Drew McIntyre interfered and made the save. Uh, two things. One, it doesn't really help Keith Lee to, to have it end like that. It doesn't. Not on his debut. He didn't have to win the match. But that should have been the main event or at least given... A good bit of time. Let it be a good match. That's how you debut a guy. If you want to have a, a jangy ending. Instead, it was like a, it was pretty short. Never got out of first gear. And then it had a, a trash DQ disqualification. Who cares? But the bigger thing. <sighs> Drew McIntyre. Again. I like Drew McIntyre. I do. I love him as champion. He's actually really surprised me. He's been fantastic as champion. But again, if this was Roman Reigns or John Cena, we would be ripping him apart. He had two punts earlier in the night. Two. Again, I don't know if anyone's had two back-to-back -back before. If they did, they damn sure didn't just pop up. He had two. And he's back. Perfectly fine. And scares Orton away. If that was Roman, we'd be killing him. We would be killing him. If that was Cena, we'd be killing them. I gotta say, that was shit. Because that, that doesn't make me root for Drew McIntyre. He's perfectly fine after two punts. No. No thank you. No thank you at all. I will say, salvaging it a little bit, later in the night, like, like, well, yeah, later in the night, or Orton punted him again backstage. And that time, the third one, he actually got medicaled out. 
But good lord. How about just have the first punt earlier and have him come back now and eat the second one again, then get medical. Did he need three in a night to finally get medical out? And after two, he was still fine? Don't do that. The punt is one of the most protected finishers in the history of this company. Let's not start devaluing it now, for Christ's sake, while Orton's doing his best work. And then we had a Lumberjack match for the Raw Women's title. It was a, a rematch. Uh, Asuka versus Sasha Banks. Let's be serious. We all knew Asuka was going to win. And a uh, Lumberjack match, it never really... It was okay. It just never... It was like a standard Lumberjack match. Nothing special. No big spots. They didn't really involve the Lumberjacks too, too much. It was mainly just so Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax can kind of make their presence felt. Bailey tried to interfere with... Uh, tried to help Sasha by tossing in a chair. Shayna stopped her. Asuka makes Banks tap out. It's just selling the story more of Bailey keeps failing to help Sasha, and Sasha succeeds in helping Bailey. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. The main event was Rom Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio versus Seth Rollins and Murphy. Mm. Ah. Match was okay. We had a double 619. That was cool. And I will say Dominic's Tornado DDT was just as beautiful this time as I saw it at SummerSlam the first time. Wow, that should just be his finisher. He can use the 619 as a setup. He can use a frog splash as a nice uh, signature move that might get a, a win here and there. But that Tornado DDT is beautiful. That should be his finisher. And you, with if, you, if it's done right, you can hit it from many positions. But... None of it mattered. This was all about retribution coming out. They interfered. And uh, they beat the shit out of uh, the baby faces, the Mysterios. And that was it. Faded to black. No explanation. But they had to do this because retribution wasn't at SummerSlam for no real explana explained reason or any reason that would make sense. If you're at Raw, why weren't you at SummerSlam? The show that matters way more. Were you scared of Roman? Were you scared of Roman? Just say it. Are you scared of Roman? I think you're scared of Roman. I think that's what it was. And, uh, that's it. That's it. And that payback, I'm not sure what they're going to do with Mysterios versus Murphy and and Seth, but it is getting close to where the feud needs to kind of be wrapped up. We're, we're, we only need, like, one more match. We only need, like, seriously, we just need one more. After that, it gets... It's going to become overkill, big time. So hopefully, maybe a tag team steel cage match would have been cool. But since it wasn't announced tonight, and there's no Raws left, it's probably just going to be standard tag match. If it's even on the card at all, it might not even be on the card. They also announced that at Payback, it will be Randy Orton versus Keith Lee one-on-one. -on -one, which I'm okay with, since finally Drew's selling the third punt, at least. He will not be there. The problem is... Like, that's a great match to have. But if you do that, why even have the match tonight? Keith Lee and Randy Orton. Just don't do it at all. Like, don't even do it at all. Because it made Keith Lee look like he was about to lose that match. And Drew kind of had to save him. Just don't do it at all. Have Keith Lee interrupt him. Randy Orton say, maybe later. And that's it. And that's it. That's it. And the maybe later is literally Sunday. That's your later. And it's because Drew McIntyre can't go because I kicked his head off yet again. And Keith Lee being his good friend, as Charlie Caruso said, which I always hate. Because wh wh when? When have you told us they've been good friends? In stories and movies, you got you can't just no no character just pops up and go, like, yeah, best friends. Even though we've the last eight chapters you've read, they had nothing to do with each other. But all of a sudden, good friends. Don't do that. Stop. 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 They do this all the fucking time, and I always hate it. But good match, Randy Orton versus Keith Lee. It'd be nice if Keith Lee picks up a victory here, but the only way he can is Drew McIntyre must interfere. So that's probably what's going to happen. We'll have the predictions later in the week. Probably on Saturday, because this is only one week till payback. We only get one SmackDown, so I'm going to have to see SmackDown if I make any predictions of what's happening. But if you are still here, you are, oh yeah, yeah, and Re Roman Reigns in a triple fucking threat for the title. Of course he's, of course, I called it. We all knew it was happening. 
Roman versus Braun versus Bray at Payback. Not mad at the match. I'm not. Sounds exciting. But God damn it. What a way to just end the Braun Fiend feud that was telling such a nice story for so long. Puff of smoke and gone. Gone. Maybe they'll continue it after Roman steals the title. Then they can go back to it. There we go. That's probably the plan. Roman, you beat them. Probably pinning uh, the Fiend. Why not? Or Elimination Style, pin both of them. Stack them on top. Pin them both. Take the title. And then they can continue their feud as you uh, face Dwayne Johnson at Mania. Why not? Why the fuck not? <laughs> Why not? But if you are still here, you are a real one. Oh, wait. <laughs> and uh, the grade. A C minus. For your troubles, Vince. Fucking C. Two C minuses in a row. Even with the Kevin Owens, Aleister Black stuff, which was great. Keith Lee's debut. Still get a C minus. Because nothing else mattered or was very good on the entire rest of the show. Three hours! Make, if, this, if this is all you can give us, make it two hours, please. Two hours, please, would be a little more enjoyable if this is what you're giving us. If you are still here, then you are a real...